I've been hustling all day. This away, that away. Do canals and alleyways just to say Monday trees is the perfect place for shading. That's just how I feel. Hey, hey. Let's kick off with what happened at the White House with Kendrick Lamar uh, going to perform on July the 4th. It isn't his first visit to the White House, but some say that because his music is so political, his presence at the 4th of July uh, barbecue is a radical act. Was it, Amanda? I think in some ways it is. And I think Obama is really making this year his year of statements. Um, Kendrick Lamar is an artist that has really carved his own path as a political maverick, but also as this person who's bringing a particular sound to hip hop. The last album, To Pimple Butterfly, Obama called it one of his favorites. And it's heavily inspired by jazz. It's heavily inspired by a lot of sounds you don't often hear on a hip hop album. And Kendrick Lamar is so brave in all of the things that he mentions and states and the fact that he chose the particular playlist that he chose for that barbecue. He didn't play To Pimp a Bl- Butterfly. So, uh, he did at the White House. He didn't play To Pimp a Butterfly. He, he chose other songs because that one's so political. Right. So he chose particular songs from the album, but he, did, uh, he didn't necessarily censor all of the politics outside of those songs, right? And so I think him being there, his presence physically, but also uh, symbolically in terms of what it means, is really, it's really important. I think Obama has opened the door for an inclusion of hip hop in a way that no other president has in the past. And the particular hip hop that he seems interested in is a political one. It's a one that speaks to a particular type of future that uh, our youth generation is looking for. Mm. One of the songs that uh, Kendra did, did perform is All Right, and it's a song that's been used over and over again uh, as a rallying cry um, in protests against police brutality. What message is Obama sending um, by having Kendrick perform the song at the White House? That Black Lives Matter. Maybe. <laughs> uh, it's funny. I feel like like him choosing Kendrick Lamar to come and give the Independence Day barbecue um, performance is not as, it's not super, super radical because it's in keeping with the fact that Obama has consistently been part of this movement. And in fact, this movement has happened while there was the first black president in office. He's not... He's never kind of shied away from the fact that black lives do matter. And even in his remarks on Independence Day, he referenced that, you know, not only did the America's forefathers fight for independence from the UK, they also fought to end slavery. Like he he's not he's not shying away from any of this. It's not new. That said, he is in his final term and he's not seeking re-election, so he doesn't have to do any kind of pussyfooting around any of the things he cares about. Mm-hmm. And that's why we get to see like a more fun, more political, more interesting Obama on the way out, maybe. Where are you on this, Stephen? I mean, is it was this subversive or, is, or was this Obama no. legacy building? No, I mean, if you perform for the president, you're not subversive. In fact, in the in the history of having artists at the White House, it's one of the least subversive acts. I mean, when, when Nixon had uh, Elvis to the White House, that was kind of subversive because he was high when he showed up. And Willie Nelson, you know, Willie, Willie Nelson, Nelson coming to the White House and smoking pot on the roof of the White House, which is apparently a true story. There's something radical about this. But in this case, you have people who are in total political alignment, I think. I mean, there's no – I imagine if Kendrick Lamar and Barack Obama sat down and tried to find out what they disagree about, Mm. it would be hard for them to come up with much. Um, So, no, I I, I think it's actually uh, totally traditional. Except the thing – you know, Kendrick's whole thing is is critiquing power structures. I mean, does he – dilute that that brand um and it's more than a brand by performing for the powerful i don't necessarily think so and i also think i disagree a little bit because i think that fact that uh President Obama may be sort of symbolically connected to the Black Lives Matter movement, but he has had to create a particular type of distance in order to maintain a certain objectivity as president. And so to have somebody come in and sing literally the anthem that protesters have Mm -hmm. used in the streets, where they also called him out for his silence on particular issues, utilizing that particular anthem and Kendrick Lamar's performing that, I think it is very political. And I think it's political that it's hip hop being done in the White House as well, too, which is also a genre that came out of an entire generation feeling dispossessed and feeling like they had no space for a voice in the mainstream media. And so they came with this particular type of, of form of music that uh, Chuck D once called, you know, the CNN for black people, mm-hmm. right? But Chuck D, if he'd performed for the president, never would have changed his lyrics. You can't mm. be a radical artist and go in front of the powerful, in front of power and actually choose not to not to speak truth to it. Right, because Kendrick left out. He was told to leave out swearing and, and he guns. Did. And hood. He, his well, last line when he left, I think in the song, he, he, he made a re- quick reference just to be Kendrick and get out of there. But well, for the most part, he followed the rules. Yeah, I mean, he followed the rules. He followed the rules in front of power. Now, you know, to me, like there is a distinction of 
you know, and Obama has always understood from the very beginning that there's this these division of rules. Like Kendrick Lamar is a prophet. He speaks the truth. But Barack Obama is the king. He has to rule, right? And so those are very different roles. They've always been very different roles. And so I think um, – I think that that kind of natural separation is there. But the idea that this was some radical act. But I think the censorship is also just about a time and place. Like, are you going to swear when you go and perform this particular song at an award show? Probably not as well, too, If right? you were Chuck D., no, I, I, I don't. I don't think so. Would. I don't think so. I think that this is just about like, okay, I recognize that this is also like your daughter's birthday, so I'm going to take out the gun reference. I'm going to take out the swearing, but I'm also going to still keep the line where I call you out as the president. Like he kept that particular line. So I think that was more of a time and place as opposed to a censorship. Thing. Well, certainly Barack Obama did not look uncomfortable. <laughs> and to me, radical artists make power uncomfortable. Like that is actually that's actually huh. a big part mm -hmm. of this purpose of art is to make power uncomfortable and. I mean, on the one hand, you probably couldn't make Obama uncomfortable if you tried okay. because he's so, he's so, you know, relaxed. And he's and, done. And he's, he's done. done. Like, he's I got, out. I got to say, I watched this thing uh, on July the 4th, and I want to play you a moment that made me uncomfortable watching it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Malia. Happy birthday to you. Oh, well, um, with the President Obama singing uh, "Happy Birthday to Malia," who's turning 18, his daughter Kendrick Lamar and Janelle Monae are there helping sing that. Um, just your typical 18th birthday party, huh? <laughs> yeah. Dad sings you happy birthday. I mean, what what are we walking away with from this night and this performance? F from the happy birthday performance? Well, <laughs> the, 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 overall, the overall sort of thing. What are you left with? I feel like this is like the end of an era. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't That's think true. we're going to see yeah. anything like this again. And to go back to this idea of radical, like the root of the word radical, like it's the root, right? The root of change, right? And I think that seeing these images of this president who... Like, we'll probably never, we won't see a president like this for a while, a president that's opened the door to hip hop, a president that is unapologetically black in a lot of particular ways, a president that um, is is so cool, like he has cool yeah. oozing out of him in yeah. so many ways that he doesn't feel afraid to sing happy birthday to his daughter because he's like, I'm still cool. I still have the best <laughs> walk since Denzel Washington, yeah. you know? And I think that when I watched it, I felt a little sad because I'm like, this is the end of this. Oh. This is the end. And this is the most connected that I've ever felt to any sort of living political leader. Um, I've never felt this particular connection. I've never felt, and I don't agree with everything that Obama's done politically at all. I've actually protested a lot of the different things that he's done, but I do feel an affinity towards him. I do feel a connection. I do feel like when I saw him singing it, it was like an uncle singing it to me, embarrassing me. Like yeah. there, there's an affinity and connection. When I feel angry with you, it feels like, oh, this is somebody that I know, and I'm just angry with this person that I know. The two people that are probably going to be running for president, I don't feel that at all. So it feels like the end of this open door moment where I felt that connected to the political process. And that to me was radical to see that and to experience that for the last eight years.